what is up everybody dan and the farmer let's go ahead and take a look at this chaos riders video Ooh. oh no oh no oh no dumping the bike let's go and take a look at this so a small reminder that maintain speed on blind corners guys you know what we're talking about blind corners right whoa side of the vehicle good job handling that on his indian scout i think that's a the scout bobber what do you guys think scout bobber right so thank you chaos riders for posting some really good footage so here we go we're going through here it looks like we're going 20 30 40 50 60 close to we're going 70 miles an hour around this corner i don't know if that's a speed limit it doesn't really matter because it's a pretty nice open road might be it's a, it looks like a little highway but we're going around a corner what should we be in we should be in orange stage because remember we're trying to plan our ride here okay we're positioning for safety locating hazardous situations okay we now we're assessing relevant threats there's no active threats right now but we're, this is a low we located that this is a hazardous situation because it's a corner right it's a blind corner too so we're getting through here can't see can't see can't see now going 70 miles per hour what should we be doing okay I know it's kind of a weird question, but what we should be doing is looking for when we uh, position for safety is these escape routes. Because when it comes to 70 miles per hour, we don't really have a good total stopping distance. Okay, so our, our perception reaction could be really good. One second each, right? Well, one second each at 70 miles per hour, how far are you going in that one second each in those two seconds? And then you have braking distance. Let's go ahead and bring that back up. Braking distance is going to be massive, absolutely massive. You got a long distance to go before you can actually stop. So the goal here is not necessarily to stop. The goal is to buy yourself time when you're doing some progressive braking. Let's get it up on the board. Come on. Some progressive braking. You're trying to buy yourself some time, but you still need to find that escape path. Because at 70 miles per hour, you're not going to be able to stop in time. So right here, we see that pattern, that side of the vehicle popping out right there, a little turtle head going in. And so that's going to give you an indication that something could happen. So when we're in orange stage, we're still prepped and ready, right? Uh, and we're planning our ride. Let's go ahead and bring that back up. We're assessing if it's a relevant threat. Okay, side of the vehicle I don't like, especially if they're not slowing down, not stopping, whatever. Now we're going to start turning it into an active threat once we see them start coming into the road. There's the active threat, and there is the grabbing of that front brake to slow us down. But look what the look at the road surface. Let's go back just a little bit. Is that is that gravel, or is that just discoloration in the road? So when we start talking about multiple factors leading into a crash, okay, you can have a bunch of factors that lead into a close call, but it just takes that one extra to cause that crash. So going around a corner, applying the brakes really hard, side of the vehicle, nothing really happens. Going around the corner, applying the brakes really hard on gravel, vehicles in front of you. You see where now that gravel is what's going to reduce some of that traction, cause you to dump the bike. So this is where we got to be very careful. I got a burp. So thankfully, he was able to dodge it, right? Applying the brakes. But that would have been quite possibly an issue. He was able to move around that road surface hazard. So watch out. So speed right here could have been reduced. The gravel might not have been such a problem. But since we have high speed, we got to watch out for the gravel. So we're coming around here, honking the horn. All we had to do was slow down to buy ourselves some time. Now we're going to find that escape to get to the other side. He kind of got launched out because he was probably looking, right? I see target fixation from touching grass, probably looking, and it started traveling that way. So guys, blind corners, how can we recap this? Blind corners, careful, don't go super fast. If we do see a side of the vehicle, be very careful. we got to buy ourselves some time at this speed, find those escape paths. Really watch out for the road surface hazards because if we start adding more and more factors to our emergency maneuvers, our red stage stuff, more than likely we're going to crash. Handled it, though. Handled it. Did a great job. Indian Scouts are great bikes, guys. Great bikes. A lot of technology in that, ABS and everything. All right, phone is gone. You know why. Uh, quad lock. Uh, grab one. Link in the description. Whoa, side of the vehicle. Good job braking. A little bit, a little bit crazy on that. So this is another blind corner. Once again, orange stage, prepped and ready. Got to be watching out for this. Got to be watching out for this. Look at the road surface hazards, too. Coming around, you can't see much. We finally see the side of the vehicle. Good job with the progressive braking, but you see how he's kind of like sloshing around. Got a little bit of fishtail. Hyped life. Here we go. Going through here, going, eh, we're just getting up to the speed limit, right? Right? Okay, I hope so. There's the side of the vehicle right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Found the escape. Found the escape. Now, why did we not? Why did we not? Why were we not? scene okay just I me mean, just just think about it you know it's nighttime dusk you know this is when lights don't really work as you can see it doesn't really work too well 
Um, people were kind of tired, so start thinking of all these different factors when it comes to this. So this is why we, when you're when you're out riding at night, it's orange stage. You're you're just constantly on alert. Can't see much. You're riding at high speeds for your your body, your human body. Your human body is only you know capable of really understanding running speeds. Maybe on horseback, but still, you know, now we're going 52 with obstacles in the road with hard surfaces. So be very careful. But we're going through here in an area where there's definitely sides of the vehicles. We have somebody coming out. Uh, right here. So when it comes to planning a ride, remember we position for safety. We're all the way over here. Good space cushion from anyone over there. Very good. Don't have an escape path really right here. We're locating hazards, assessing if they're threats, and we're going to navigate when it comes to it. So when it comes to an escape path though, okay, so remember position for safety, we're looking for one escape path, good line of sight, good space cushion. So let's bring that back up. Uh, so with an escape path, we have to have it. Don't have one to the left, but what we can do is swerve left, swerve right, accelerate, or brake. Okay, those are the things. We can go forward, not really backwards, but braking, left or right. Can't go up, can't go down, but we can at least work on this 2D uh, dimension, right? So we're coming up to here. We see this. This person is not going to stay in their lane. You see how they're pointed that way? We have a left turn right here, high hazard situation. We got to do something. We're going to go into red stage right now. Got to find that escape path. So we're going 52. Let's see what he does. He accelerates through. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. You got to, because if he tried to slow down, he would have ran into him. If we, if we applied progressive brake pressure, because remember, br this stuff right here is, they're just tools, okay? You can accelerate through. You can also apply progressive braking. You have to find the solution that's working for your situation. And right here, accelerating through to actually get through that gap is what was needed. So a good job on this rider. Now, I don't know if that's the speed limit. I mean, this could just be a natural thing that happens at night for this person. I don't know. He had his lights on, but at this, you know, at this juncture or at the, uh, at the, at the nighttime, like, Ooh, yeah. What are you doing there? Really? You saw that. But like at that time of night right there is even with the dusk and everything, it's just, you can't see it very well. You know, good job on the escape though. Really good. And then he didn't hit the curb. So that was good. So we're coming up to this next one. Yeah, this is what we're doing. We're coming up to this next one. We see this person, uncommon thing in a common situation, right? What are they doing? What are they doing? Orange stage, come on now. You see them like kind of swerve. Let's go back a little bit because the orange stage is on the, on the board right here. You see how they're going straight and all of a sudden they do this real quick? That's going to tell you, uh-uh, don't like that. Roll up the throttle, maybe apply some brake pressure, see what they're doing. They're being idiots. Find that escape. So there's the switch to the left right there. Mm, I see the side of the vehicle when I'm supposed to be going straight and just seeing the uh, tail lights and the tailgate. So he does do what he should be doing. So good job on him. That guy finally sees what's happening. Yeah, good job on the rider for not panicking too hard. Handled it, though. All right, this is the one with the cows. Around the blind corner. Orange stage. Woo! Good job with uh, avoiding the road surface hazards. <laughs> Side of the cows. Now get back in your lane at this point. Let's take a look at the next one. Jay Brizzy, going pretty fast here. I think we've seen some of these. These are some of the old videos. I mean, like I said, Chaos Riders, Moto Stars. This moment that he knew he fucked up. Moto Madness and all of them. Oh! Let's rescue. Let's rescue. Grab a rescue pack. You can rescue them. Remember to stop major bleeds, but really remain calm and sure your own safety. Doing good? Full suit? Full suit. Very good. Leathers. This is uh, this will be unit two in the new MTC Rider Academy. Uh, guys, uh, we just launched unit one. It's the, uh, the MTC awareness stages, the plan method. You get uh, downloadables, you get the Smart Rider drill booklet, you get a whole bunch of stuff, $99 a year. It's cheaper than just doing the month, the month, the month, but you get a whole bunch of stuff and unit two's coming out. Unit three, unit four, unit five, unit six, unit seven. So if you sign up now, you'll see them come out. We're gonna do live streams for the MTC Rider Academy. No worries, no worries. Okay. You, you good? Okay. Sign up now, link's in the description. Huh? <sighs> It's okay. It already happened. The, shit the new basic happened. smart rider course launching. 
right now. Ooh, lost some stuff. Lost some stuff. Bad low side, yeah. Could have been a lot worse. No, no. Could have been a lot worse. We're gonna clean it up. Floats or rolls, here we go. Going through here. Renthal. Having some fun, blind corner. Don't go too fast around this corner. Hey, you got an off-road bike, you can handle it. Did that on purpose. Completely did that on purpose. I went too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Talking on their cardos. Very good. Rembo. This guy does a lot of good stuff. He's a smart rider. Let's hopefully he hopefully he shows up or shows off his smart rider skills. Because he does follow them. I follow him on an Instagram and everything. Let's see. Did I miss something? There's the open lane pattern. Switching over. Ooh. Okay. Hey, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Owns up to it. Accountability. So we have the DDFM crew challenge. Coin. That was pretty, pretty loud. The DDFM crew challenge coin. Awareness, action, accountability. Those are the principles that we follow right here. He's being accountable. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Jay Biker, here we go. A little bit of a bump. Boop, boop. Hey, how you doing? Whoa! Almost crashed. Handlebars nice and straight. Before you apply the brakes, you see how it went down? If he had him turned, he would have fell over. Moving on. Move, moving on. Side of the motorcycle. Road rage. Oh my gosh! Whoa! Did he hit it? Wow, orange stage situation right here. We have headlights in our lane. Don't like it. When it comes to this type of situation, position off over here. I get it, wanting to fight for your lane and lane position center. I call it center now. I don't like doing one, two, three anymore. Right here, move over. Just move over. Let them. Law of gross tonnage. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to hurt your hand too. All right, having some fun here. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, is that barbed wire? Please don't tell me it's barbed wire. So I did something very similar with my Harley. Lost some, lost some traction, lost, lost some balance, crashed into a bush. But I was on a Harley. All right, bike hub, here we go. Going to, looks like we're going a little bit fast here for a corner that looks really sharp. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Slow look, press and roll. Whoa, what was that? So low side? It's kind of like a high side. That's kind of a high side. Kind of a high side. Very high mechanism of injury. Not something we want to do. Um, you're going to be launched and yeah, the rear kicked out. So we started low siding right here. And then it grabbed traction again right there. And he, I think he just fell. Okay, so it was like a side side. Yeah, exactly, Veronica. It was a side side. Uh, what causes a high side again? So you start to do that low side part. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is the low side. There it is. So the back end starts to slide and you start to fall in. So if we're turning left, you start to fall in left. Okay, start that rear tire starts to slide out or even the front tire slides out, one of them or both. But what happens is that when it starts sliding, it can grab traction again. So it's like it grabs and then it launches you forward. Think of it as you're running really fast. You're just hauling booty. Okay, you're, you're either on gravel or like wet grass. So let's say wet grass. You're hauling booty on wet grass, and you just put you plant your feet, and you start sliding. Now, if you lean too far back, you'll fall down to your back, right? If you lean too far forward, you'll fall forward. What happens with a high side is that you're sliding, you're starting to fall back, but then your feet grab traction. It grabs, like, let's say, not wet grass or, like, something that's going to stop you, which is basically going to grab traction, and then you, all of a sudden you launch forward. So you're sliding, oh, no, and then boom, you fly over. That's a high side. A low side is you're falling, oh no, and then you actually fall down. But you're either way, you're running fast and sliding. It's a loss of traction issue. Hopefully that helped. I have no idea what I just said. Here we go. Com completing a quick warm up lap of LCR on a beautiful Sunday. Okay, here we go. 
Moving through here, moving through here. Watch out for some gravel. We got a little squiggly sign right there. Okay, so sharp right, sharp left, kind of. Ooh, gravel, don't like it, don't like it. This is why we do it on a track. They usually don't have this stuff or oncoming traffic. So this is that left uh, portion, crest of the hill. Uh, and then pass slower, okay. Something happened, oh, we froze, okay. Sharp left, sharp right. We have sharp left right here. It's doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. Sharp right. He's slowing down to maintain a space cushion. While braking for the turnaround, I hear noise in my rear left, and then... Jesus Christ. What? Is this the new Tesla bike? Burn. Uh oh. Are you okay? Time to rescue. Time to rescue. Not getting up. Not getting up. Is he just not getting up because he doesn't want to? Or watch your bike. Oh, okay, he's moving. Okay, so it's really hard to lift it up by the handlebars. Get the handlebar, the tail, right here, and walk it up. So lean, lean down and walk it up. I, I've done a video, there's so many other videos about it, but when you try to do it this way, you're like doing this twisting motion and, and you're not utilizing your legs and back. You're using your upper body, your chest and shoulders. I get it because like that's how you pick up things normally, but a 500 pound bike, you, you utilize the leverage and the fulcrum that, it, that, that you have. But yeah, uh, okay? could possibly be injured. One second. Hey, Chief, this clip is from Angry D. It just shows his shitty riding. Might as well skip. All the best, Rookie Ronaldo. Well, thank you, Rookie. Um, I guess we're skipping this clip. <sighs> Don't eat all the crayons. All right, let's move on. Can we, can we move on? There we go. Ernesto Cordova. Here we go. Moving through here. What did I miss? What did I miss? Okay, so it's peeking out. Good job with the escape path. Moved on. Raging survival. Oh, we got intersections in neighborhoods. Left turner, non-issue. Roll off, just roll off the throttle. You didn't even have to brake. Lord Tez. Okay, uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do we have here? Yep, emerge issue. We had an open lane pattern. We moved off into the shoulder. Get back onto our lane because of all that debris. Good job. So this right here is kind of a weird situation. What I like to do, let's go and get the pen out a little bit right here. Let's go and get the pen out. I wait for this truck to be like way further. I basically want no one near this truck and I want an open space cushion in front of this truck. So when I actually accelerate, I have a space cushion right away. I'm already staggered. I don't like hang out on the side of a truck. I think we had a guy that was in here that was a trucker. I don't like hanging out to the side of the truck and waiting for the person in front of me to finally move. I wait for them to finally move, and then I pass the truck. I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but I don't like to ride side by side with a truck. I stay staggered with the truck at all times. And when I do pass a truck, I accelerate. I just accelerate. Get out of there. Because this is definitely an open lane pattern where they just move over. Yeah, the far right truck, might, maybe he's moving over. Who knows? Or they just wanted to move. All right, rain. Here we go. Intersection, orange stage, orange stage. Prep, prep and ready. Oh, two, double side of the vehicles. All right, we got a Tesla. What was the other one? Is that a Prius? It can't be a Prius. There's no way. No, it's not a Prius. A little Nissan scent? No. Either way, it's a Tesla. Sometimes these things can pop out. Uh... Usually it's a Prius. All right. Let's take a look at this. Look at the traffic. We're downtown. This should automatically be orange staged, prepped, and ready. Ford Fusion, probably. Yeah. Uh, orange staged. We're prepped and ready. We're planning our ride. We're making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're covering those brakes. We're positioning for safety, locating. This is a hazardous situation, so we already located it. But we need to assess if there's any threats. This person's kind of a threat, but we're going to move on. Not a threat anymore. Right here is a possible threat. We got a blind corner, or not a blind corner. We're in the blind spot. There's a Tesla in front of us. Interesting. 
We're getting through here. We have an intersection. Okay, we gotta get. We gotta be prepped and ready for this, guys. Okay, this is definitely the orange stage. What do we do here? What do we do here? We don't know. We don't know. Okay, we're getting through the intersection. Looks pretty clear. It looks pretty clear. Now we're back to yellow stage. Back to yellow stage. Look how look. It's clear. We're past the intersection. We still have, you know, some possible left turners here and there. But here's the thing. You go from orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, real quickly. You do it quickly. And if you want to just stay in orange, stay in orange until you get closer to home. Right here, we have side of the vehicle. We have a left turner right here popping in. Okay, we have a left turner right here. We have a left turner right here. Uh-oh. Possible threats. So let's go and take a look at the plan method here. We're locating this hazardous situation. We're going to be in orange stage. We're assessing if they're relevant threats. And if they are real threats, active threats, we got to do something. We're going to go into red stage, okay? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Red stage. What do we do in this red stage situation? All we have to do is progressively brake. Squeeze. Just squeeze a little bit. Not all of it. Just maybe, you know, if, if it's a from a, a 1 to 10, okay, 1 is all the way down. 10 is like you barely put your fingers on it. Give it a 9. That's it. Just a little bit of a 9. Roll off the throttle and give it a 9. You're going to get engine braking and mechanical braking. And then he's fine. He, see how he swerved a little bit to find the escape path? Now everything is good. Now, imagine if we were going super fast. We accelerated to honk and to get close on purpose, and we would have probably crashed. But this person did a great job. We have another side of the vehicle right there. So I know he's looking here at the mirror. Once again, though, what's in front of us? We just passed this. This is why we need to get over. Well, not, not get over. We can still feel it. But it's like we just passed the situation that we handled. Let's move on. Because there's other stuff in front of us. We didn't stop. We're still traveling through space and time. So we got that. Okay. Here we go. Boost 10. Having some fun. Okay. I get it. I get it. But watch out for the truck right there, buddy. Oh. Time for insurance. There you go. He's like, I've done this before. All you have to do is move the back wheel and get yourself out of there, but that's not good at all. So here's the thing. You know, you guys do you. You do you. Uh, boost boost 10. I, I honestly, I don't really care. You hit a truck. If you hit a kid, I'd, I'd care, but it's not my problem. It's your problem. Well, it's really the kid's problem. Don't hit a kid, though, by the way. Uh, this is your life. I can't care about everybody. I really can't. Um, you can still be a smart rider in stunt. Because remember, what is their principles, right? It's not a way of riding. It's their principles. You have to seek and recognize, maintain your skills, acquire and use gear, rescue others. Let's go and bring that back up. And teach and mentor other riders. It has nothing to do with, like, stunting. So, I mean, you can still seek and understand that this is a hazard situation. Wasn't really paying attention to that. Maybe you understood it, but just didn't care. Because you can always choose not to. You can maintain your skills. It takes a lot of skill to do this. Right? Can we leave it up there? Uh, acquire news gear. It looks like they got some gear. Rescue. This is the part where I don't see a lot. Bring it back up. We don't see a lot of this. Maybe teaching and mentoring, helping each other out, but I don't see a lot of the rescue. I really don't. So, guys, if you're going to be stunting, you, you're going into a more high-risk situation. So we need to understand how to rescue if we're stunting. We need to rescue when we're just riding motorcycles. Stunting is even more dangerous. But you have the skill set, hopefully, to offset the risk. But we still have to do this rescue part. So if you don't want to buy the kit, we have a rescue pack out on the store, but you can build your own. The main thing here is remain calm, sure, and safety, stop major bleeds. Okay, if your buddy is looking like he's drunk, he probably has a head injury after a crash, right? If he, has, if he can't move his legs and arms, guess what? A spinal cord injury. But these are, how, these are how you take care of it while you're on scene until EMS actually shows up and does the real work. You're just trying to prevent them from dying uh, from major bleeds for the most part. So, guys, if you're stunting, please, 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 please get some medical training. You're doing an even higher risk thing than just regular motorcycle riding. I don't care if you do this. That's not my truck. It's not my face. It's not my motorcycle. It's not my friend. It's not my city. It's not, it's not my worry. It isn't. But if you care about your buddy, if, you care about, if your buddy cares about you, you guys get the medical training. That's it. That's all I care about. Guy looks like he's like, I'm a badass. I did it. 
I'd feel pretty good too. Anyways, here we go. Strider 790. Side of the vehicle came out in front of us. We're going to go ahead and pass them. Not a big deal. Non issue. Non issue. Strider 790 once again moving through here. Comes the driver pissed because Ryder threw hands up at him. Dude, sweet collar. I had to go back to see his collar. Dude, he's got cargo shorts and his popped collar. Damn. Damn. I'm surprised this rider messed with this guy. Whoa. Fuck, dude. Guy probably slays. Anyways, uh, guys, that's going to be the last <laughs> from Chaos Riders. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we're going to be doing some more after action reviews, but join the MTC Rider Academy. $99 a year, but you're getting a whole bunch. Just check it out. Link in the description. Just click the link, see what it looks like, see if, you, if it's something you want to do. Get some training, get some downloadables. We're launching more and more courses and hopefully hiring more instructors with the more students we have. All right, guys, I'll see you around.